Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been about three months since I've uploaded anything. One, I was extremely busy in the past couple of months and two, I kind of lost motivation on my YouTube channel. I just kind of didn't really have any content or like was motivated to post anything. So sorry about that. I'm really gonna try this year to kind of make YouTube more of my focus. So let's see if I pull through. Um, anyways, let's start this Q&A. Yesterday I asked my Instagram, which is right here, uh, if anyone had any questions to DM me because honestly I get a lot of questions every day and a lot of them are very similar and I was like, you know what, I'll just make a video and try and answer everyone's questions. So there was a total of 85 questions yesterday and I'm going to answer 25 of them and either way a lot of them were very um, like repetitive. Number one question. Why did I choose to be an engineer? That's actually a really good question because it's not like I it was my first choice um, Honestly growing up. I was never like oh, I'm gonna be an engineer like this is what I want to do uh, My dad is an engineer, but it was nothing like it wasn't related to that why I chose this um, I actually wanted to be a dentist believe it or not and um, I didn't pass the dental exam that you have to do where you have to like carve out of a soap like a spe special shape um, and then I had to retake it six months later and I just like I didn't want to wait that long and my second choice was chemical engineering which I had a cousin Manny who told me it was a, like a really good career and all his friends who had been through that program uh, all had really good jobs so props to Manny because he was basically the person that influenced me into going into chemical engineering now that actually answers the second question because I get a lot of questions on what kind of engineer are you? I'm a chemical engineer and I graduated in McGill University in Montreal, which is in Canada. What do you like most about working on rigs? Um, I like that it's a team of different companies and people all coming together for one purpose, basically to drill a well and Everyone does it safely and we're all kind of at each other's interest to try and make the job go as smooth as possible. So it's kind of like a bunch of people coming together for like one goal, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I've never seen another girl on a rig, like as a rig hand or like a driller. I've seen a company, like a supervisor at the well site that's a girl, uh, very rarely. But no, I've never seen like another girl that is usually out there when I'm there. So that's another question. Is there a lot of girls? No, there isn't. But, you know, believe it or not, there's a lot of women in the oil field. You just don't see them that much. But I think in the past, like, two years, I've seen a big increase. So if you are a female and you're interested in going in the oil field, I definitely encourage you to because it's a very rewarding um, career path. Uh, it's great money and... Um, I don't know, I think I think it's kind of cool that you're like unique, right? Because there's not a lot of us out there. Okay, second question, uh, third question, sorry. How long have I been working for Schlumberger? Sorry, this is out of focus. How long have I been working for Schlumberger? I've been working for Schlumberger for almost six years. That's including my internship. So in total of actually working for them, like full time is five years, plus one summer that I did an internship. But in total, six years since I've been with the company. What city were you born in? Uh, I was born in a very small island in the Caribbean that belongs to Colombia. It's called San Andres Island. You can Google it because a lot of the times it's not even on the map. But it's there, it's a tiny little island, which I love. So that's actually another question that I got was what was my rotation? So I work 20 days in the field and then I get 10 days off and I usually fly back to Canada Okay When are you coming to Mexico? Uh, soon, I don't know. All inclusive, why not? Um, let's see Are you originally from Canada? No I was born in Colombia, like I said, but at the age of six, I moved to Montreal with my mom. Uh, so I basically grew up in Canada, but I still consider myself Colombian. Are you married? So, 
I get this question quite a bit once in a while, um, or sometimes I have to tell people. I don't display a lot of my relationship or my marriage on my Instagram because it's kind of personal and my Instagram is not about like my life and stuff outside of my work. I like to display my work and because I'm proud of it, so I don't really mix the two. But yes, I am married uh, almost four years soon. But um, yeah, we've actually been together for 12 years since we were in high school, so. Okay, yes, this one I guess so many times. I'm not a driller. I know it seems like I am because I'm on a rig all the time, but my position at Slumberjay is I'm a wireline open hole field engineer. So basically, let me explain what it is because that's another like misconception of what I do. So Slumberjay is a technology company we offer services to our clients which are big oil companies or small oil companies and we basically provide them services it goes from drilling to producing the well to fracking logging the well like we offer so many services and my little part is wireline so basically we have open hole evaluation tools that we can give data to the client once the well is drilled we'll lower our tools in there and then we can give them resistivity, gamma ray, neutron density, basically logs and with that they can read where the oil, where the water, where the gas, like what kind of rocks and properties do they have down in the well which is very important for the client because that's where they'll know how valuable their well is and basically where they want to produce it from. So that's what I do. That's why I go to so many different rigs because every time they finish drilling a well they'll basically call me and say like okay come you know, evaluate our well, like we want to know what's down here. So that's basically what I do. I go from rig to rig across West Texas and New Mexico. And that's basically what I do. Someone asked um, that he works in the oil field and his wife wants to work in the oil field, but he doesn't want her to because he thinks that they're not treated properly. Um, I'll address that. Um, I think it's a misconception that females don't get treated well in the field. Um, like I said, I've never had a bad experience. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of talk when I'm there, but it's never been in my face. Like no one's ever said anything disrespectful to me. Um, like personally, like I'm sure behind my back, like people are talking, but never to me. Um, I've also never like heard someone tell me that I shouldn't be out there and that, you know, go get another job. The only time I've ever seen that where it's been like really disrespectful and kind of like tried to bring me down because I was a female in the oil patch is all on Facebook or social media like Instagram. It's never been in real person. So yeah, there's a lot of people who think females um, like that women shouldn't be out in the field and we should basically be in the kitchen cooking for you. But um, no, it's never actually happened to me where that was like brought up to me in person. Also, in case you guys didn't know, um, oil companies are extremely strict when it comes to bullying or when it comes to like gender balance or basically when you're trying to put someone down while you're working. Um, or sexual harassment also it's huge so I think most people are kind of scared to even like talk to me or disrespect me because they know if that ever happens and I complain they'll get fired it's zero tolerance so I think that's kind of like a good way for you to be protected so <clears throat> sorry I'm sick um, if you're a female you want to go in the field and you're worried like do not be worried about it you are like you, the company has your back and most guys out there are actually pretty respectful to you um so yeah i've never had a bad experience and uh, honestly it's not as bad as people think <laughs> okay what kind of dogs do you have you always post them i have two dogs her name is moose and the other one's bear and it's a sheep -a doodle and a golden doodle uh, they're both one is two years old and the other one's three and they're basically like my entire life i'm obsessed with these dogs and yeah that's why i work hard Okay, let's get into like the more uh, serious questions. So someone said, um, what do you think about you being the one going out to the field and working and your husband doesn't do this type of work? Um, honestly, it doesn't really bother me at all. Um, we have both very different careers and that's okay. I think it's, I think it's, 
good that we aren't doing the same thing or that you know we're not like, identical people where we're like we both work in the office or whatever um <clears throat> Honestly, I don't think it really matters that I'm the one going out to the field. If he wanted to, he could, but he decides not to. It's just not for him. I enjoy the field, so it's basically what works for each one of us. Okay, another question. Um, what do you want to tell girls out there that want to, you know, follow your steps and be a badass? <laughs> okay. Um, honestly, if I had, like, one advice for you girls is basically like just go after what you want don't let anyone anyone tell you no um and also if you don't have a partner like a boyfriend or a husband that is like fully supportive of all your decisions and everything that you want to do then you just gotta walk away from that like seriously you are so much better than that and you need someone who's there to support you who's there to have your back and who's there to basically grow with you together and not put you down like yeah number one you're you deserve the world you deserve to have someone who's there for you all the time funny this is a funny question it was um are all colombian girls crazy because my last girlfriend was Colombian and she scarred me for life um I'm not gonna answer that I gotta date one and see <laughs> it's funny because I've heard that quite a bit of time when I'll say like oh I'm Colombian and they're like oh my ex was Colombian that she's crazy <laughs> so maybe I think we do have a little bit of craziness inside of us don't mess with us and you don't have to see the crazy okay um, okay, I have like three more questions that I'm gonna answer and then I gotta go. Um, okay, <clears throat> this is more like related to work. So someone's asking, what are the steps to become a field engineer at, at Slumberjay? So I'm sure it's the same for Halliburton, Weatherford, Baker Hughes, Slumberjay. Um, all service companies I think are very similar. So it's basically you need an engineering degree or like a bachelor of science I think but mainly like an engineering degree uh, it doesn't matter what kind of engineer chemical electrical mechanical like whatever as long as you're an engineer and you have that degree they will train you on what you need to know for the job whether it's fracking wireline cementing like etc you get a full training and then you become a field engineer for that position and then you go out to the field and you basically just perform jobs when you're in the field there's also a progression line so you start at Sorry, you start as a junior field engineer, then you become a field engineer, then you become a senior field engineer, then you jump over and you become a general field engineer. That's basically the steps that, you know, the company wants you to do while you're in the field. It's kind of like promotions. Once you become a GFE, which is a general field engineer, within like three to five years is usually like how people get to this position. Then you can get out of the field and you can basically go into sales, into HR, into safety, into like management roles. Like then the door is fully open to you for within the company. I'm basically at the very last step as a general field engineer is where I'm heading into. And then from there, I'd like to maybe go in sales or who knows. Okay, very last question because I have like 2% left on my battery and it's about to die. Um, what was the question? What was the question? Okay, days off. Are they promised and do they like actually give you days off? So this really depends on what country you're in. I know for sure US and Canada, they're very respectful of your time off and your days off because I guess like work laws. Um, sometimes they will ask you to work extra on days off if they really have no one. You could say no, but most of us say yes because they'll usually pay you double. And um, I know I've heard in other countries, you don't necessarily get days off. Like you basically have to work with your manager when you can get some time off. So I know it's a little bit harder in the rest of the world, but in North America, you're really lucky um, in terms of days off. They're very well given to you. Moose. My dogs keep barking. Anyways, 
Thank you guys for joining me on my Q&A. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm going to try to make more of these videos for you. See ya!